for Tarzan, Friday at 7.30. I'm Mary Hart at the Entertainment Tonight studios in Hollywood. We have an exclusive on the O.J. film The Police Want to See. You get to see it right here. Plus, will all the fuss over O.J. lead to an anti-tabloid law? I'm John Tesh, and we're working on a special report. Potential witnesses will be polluted. And a man gets his story in the movies, but it costs him $3 million. I'll split it with her. This is Entertainment Tonight for Wednesday, July 27th, 1994. He liked one special knife. It was this testimony in O.J. Simpson's preliminary hearing by a knife salesman who had also sold his story to the National Enquirer that may enact a law in California preventing witnesses in criminal cases from selling their stories to the media. The question of a fair trial is being severely uh, hampered by virtue of people uh, being paid uh, for their testimony, so to speak. California Assembly Speaker Willie Brown says he's angered by the flurry of paid interviews in the Simpson case and proposes that the selling of stories become a misdemeanor. Terry Raskin of the Globe tabloid says that such legislation would hurt her paper and admits that money sometimes gets people to talk. The payments for actual sources or stories are far less than one would imagine. Of course, we will have an open checkbook if it ever came down to O.J. or Al Cowlings, although I don't think that will happen, and I'll give them my American Express card number. Geraldo Rivera says his show doesn't pay guests for stories, but acknowledges that some shows do and that the proposed new law just won't change things. What I am afraid of is that potential witnesses will be polluted by the money coming from the tabloid magazines or the television news magazines. I certainly agree with Speaker Brown's motive his intention is right i think that his means however will be found unconstitutional dateline nbc anchor stone phillips also concurs that laws limiting the press could restrict free speech i hope people understand and i think they do that the major networks don't pay for for interviews and and maybe there ought to be just more public outcry over this practice i'm not sure legislating our way out of it is the way to go with this kind of measure Continues to be interesting, Hot doesn't topic, it? Yeah, yeah. Really There's does. a fairly good chance that O.J. Simpson's biggest movie role will never see the light of day, except perhaps as a piece of evidence in open court. Now, Simpson plays the lead in Frogman, a made-for-TV movie that promised to make him the next big action hero. Entertainment Tonight was there before O.J. Simpson's fortunes declined. And as you watch, keep in mind how O.J.'s life has dramatically changed. Look, you can't walk, I'll carry you. I walk. This is a scene from Frogman, the world's most talked about movie. And only Entertainment Tonight can show it to you. Oh, that guy. <laughs> that OJ is great. <laughs> Our production team was the only one cleared to visit this set in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And what we saw there was a film being built around the heroic image of OJ Simpson. I'm wetting camera, him huh? down so it looks like we can't we can't like we pray his... O.J. was cast as John Bullfrog Burke. He was leading a band of former Navy SEALs. This mission was capturing and exchanging a fugitive for a kidnapped victim. Cut, cut, cut. Look, there's something I'd like to explain. You remember you were 13 and you ran away from home and took that bus across country? We were there when a pivotal scene was being shot in this oceanfront cemetery. Simpson and Roxanne Beckford are a father and long estranged daughter who reunite at the grave of Simpson's fictional ex-wife. When mom was sick, she liked to listen to Andy tell stories about you, too. The setting now seems macabre, but back in April, Simpson joked about the location and about playing a father. We're the most lively people in the place. <laughs> well, there was that grave that's open, partially. Yeah, did you see that open grave? Did you see it? it there's a... <laughs> I knew him, Rip, the old pal of mine. Father-daughter? This, this, this is not our wedding? This is not the wedding scene? This is asking forgiveness of your previous yeah, yeah. I thought we were getting married here. While we were covering this story, Simpson constantly referred to his family. While introducing us to his co-stars, Todd Allen, Dan Gauthier, and Louis Mandalore, he seemingly mentions Nicole and Arnell Simpson. I think all the girls are going to be crazy about this guy. They already are because of a certain burger commercial that he does. My daughter and my wife knew who he was when they saw He's the guy from the... Can it's I say the name of a burger? My brother. As he prepared for this water rescue scene, Simpson spoke about his two younger children. 
I'm not the greatest swimmer. My kids, uh, my kids love the water. And I have a house, or I've had a house for the last 10 years down in Laguna for the summers, uh, right on the beach. So I get in the ocean a little bit. And give him action, please. Action. Action. Simpson told us he trained with former Navy SEALs for this role, but he insisted that this film and a possible series spinoff would downplay violence. A lot of our storyline will not have to do with violence. It has more to do with rescue operations, protection, stuff like that. During our exclusive visit, Simpson was outfitted with guns, but he never wore or used a knife. You got your wetsuit, then you got your weapons, and all of them are basically waterproof. Silencer on your automatic weapon, pistol, ammunition. And the former football hero was a real team player on the shoot. When we needed a second take of an opening, he gladly obliged. The next time I'm joining the Army, I'm joining the Army the next time, I'm staying on land. These feet was made for land, not for the water. His co-stars thought the world of O.J. People are always coming up to him and stuff, and he's just more, he's one of the most pleasurable people I've ever met in this business like this. A great guy, very smart, and he just fits the character, you know, he's very athletic. He's a big, big, strong man, and uh, he's doing a great job. The fully edited version of Frogman now sits in a film vault under lock and key. Its star is, of course, behind bars, but for a few days in April, O.J. Simpson's future did look bright indeed. Well, I am an action hero. <laughs> no, you know, obviously every kid dreams about doing stuff like this. And it is fun, but sometimes it works. What makes this so haunting is that this was a routine on-location shoot for entertainment tonight. Mm -hmm. And now you find yourself, and I'm sure everybody at home finds themselves, hanging on every word that he says. Exactly. And, and you do see the stark contrast. He's the happy-go-lucky, very amiable and, uh, you know, man with a sense of humor there that so many of us know so well, as opposed to the man sitting in court and right. under very serious circumstances. Indeed. Yeah. Well, O.J. Simpson's sportscasting future, like his acting career, is cloudy, and there's a storm involved in replacing him at NBC. We have the details in today's E.T. Gazette. The Bills are totally confused whatever Denver is doing defensively. In recent years, it was O.J. Simpson who worked the sidelines for NBC's football telecast. But with his future clouded, Hannah Storm has been picked to replace him. The one-time CNN sports anchor who came to NBC in 1992 most recently covered the NBA Finals for the network. Come September, she'll join Dick Enberg and Bob Trumpy on the A-team, prowling the sidelines and doing post-game interviews. Oh, my! Nicole Kidman must be going batty. First husband Tom Cruise lands the starring role in Interview with a Vampire. And now sources say she's been offered the female lead in Batman Forever. It's all but a done deal, and when signed, Nicole will play a criminal psychologist specializing in split personalities who falls for the caped crusader. She'll join Val Kilmer, Tommy Lee Jones, and Chris O'Donnell, who've already been cast. And bad news from Bedrock. Dino's voice may have been stolen. Producers of the Flintstones movie have been slapped with a lawsuit by the family of the late Mel Blanc. It was Blank who did the talking for the lovable Snorkosaurus in the original TV series. And his family claims producers lifted the voice right off the show for Dino's film debut. They claim no compensation was made and no screen credit given. The suit asks for a minimum of one million bones. And one of the big bones of contention in court will be the Flintstones movie credits, which lists Dino's voice being supplied by Dino. The cop gives a waitress a $2 million tip. Too good to be true, right? We've got the real guy, and the tip was $3 million. His amazing story is next on E.T. Then, Snake Plissken escapes from New York again. The first look at a new version of a Kurt Russell classic. And later, didn't anybody ever tell him not to jump on the furniture? We'll show you how this trick is done. with a cellular phone? Introducing Amigo from Cantel. Affordable cellular for people like you who thought they'd never use it. At last, there's cellular that fills your need for safety. For only $19.95 a month, you can have a regular phone for your car. A phone they can use to reach you and you can use to reach them.
Just by calling this number, you can have Amigo Safety. It plugs into any cigarette lighter. Imagine, for just 66 cents a day, it's that easy to have the kind of safety and security you've always wanted for your family. You can have that good feeling right now. Have your credit card handy and call. We'll get your Amigo Safety to you within 48 hours. Or if you'd like even greater freedom, you can have it for only $29.95 a month. This is Amigo Personal, and it goes anywhere. Wherever you are, you can call friends, and they can call you. And all your weekend calls are free. Amigo Safety, Amigo Personal. You make the choice and call this number now. Ask how for just $10 more you can get unlimited evening calling. Your Amigo phone comes right out of the box with easy-to-follow instructions. Just pick it up and call. As easy as that, you're talking safety, you're talking personal. But hurry, because if you order right now, you'll be eligible to win the use of a Jaguar XJS seat. So call now, because at last, your affordable cellular is only a phone call away. Amigo. Where did we win? Four million dollars. In the movie, Nicolas Cage plays a cop who gives his waitress a $2 million tip. Sounds like your typical far-fetched Hollywood story, right? Wrong. It happened 10 years ago when Dobbs Ferry detective Bob Cunningham gave half of his hefty lottery winnings to his favorite waitress. We spent a very busy yesterday with the man who inspired the film as he relived that time. When we came back here, we started calling the guys up and... Party time. <laughs> we were hoping you were going to put a hundred dollar bill in everybody's mailbox. <laughs> that, that never happened. Though. That never happened. I'm still waiting for mine. BT, come on, I'll show you where I bought the ticket. That lucky venue is the Main Street stationery store right across from the police station. This is where I bought the uh, winning ticket. Ten years ago. Those winning numbers are permanently ingrained. Seven nine twenty one twenty eight twenty nine forty three. Oh, yeah. Can I have five quick, please? Thank you. And he is still playing the game. I'll split it with her. All right? The Hollywood version has Bridget Fonda in a downtown diner. The real waitress worked at Sal's restaurant in Yonkers. Owner Lisa Pellegrino was there when Bob got the good news. Well, you know, my son over here, he started, Bob, you got a one. You got a two. You got a three. You got a four. When he reached the six, <laughs> Last night at a star-studded premiere, Bob Cunningham and wife Gina were the center of attention. Lights going on, you know, flashbulbs going up, you know, it's, it's overpowering. After 32 years of marriage, I'm very proud of you. And at the swanky Central Park party to celebrate the movie, the Cunninghams were still on cloud nine. You know, you see it in, uh, on TV and you say, oh, you know, big deal, but when you're here, wow. Double wow, as the movie star gave credits where credit is due. You're an inspiration, so I'm glad I got a chance to play right with your, your, your essence. The real guy. <laughs> the man. Waitress Phyllis Penzo is publicity shy and isn't talking about her story, but she and Robert Cunningham remain pals, and they still play the lottery together with the same arrangement to split the winnings. It Could Happen to You opens on Friday. Tom Arnold didn't hit the lottery, but he's about to be rolling in dough. Tom is ready to sign for a reported $1.5 million to play Hugh Grant's sidekick in the comedy Nine Months. Tom's riding a wave with the hit movie True Lies. He's also asking estranged wife Roseanne to make support payments. He would like $100,000 a month. The movie Immortal Beloved has paid romantic dividends for co-stars Isabella Rossellini and Gary Oldman. They met on the set in Prague, fell in love, and now reportedly plan to be married later on this year. You know in Hollywood it's A-list stars and big movie premieres, but my home away from home in Montana has its own kind of show business. I was asked to take the stage over the weekend to narrate a production of the children's classic Peter and the Wolf. And how could I say no with my own little guy sitting right down front? <laughs> It's a town picnic and a summer holiday rolled into one, and they call it the Flathead Music Festival. It's a real family affair for the town, and for me too. My mom was there, and so was my dad. My husband Bert and son AJ were front row center. Jim Neighbors, my whitefish friend and neighbor, was there too. <laughs> Peter, sitting in the tree, said, Don't shoot! Bertie and I have already caught the wolf. When it was all over, I was thrilled by the applause and by the reaction of my friends. 
I want yeah, you to know right, you were yeah. fantabulous. Well, thank you. You were good. You were good. You were good. <laughs> and then, of course, there was the review I really wanted to hear. Did you understand the story? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. Who was in the story? Daniel Wolf. Okay, well, that's it. That's it, folks. It was a hit in our family. <laughs> he didn't say mommy, he said Peter and the Wolf. <laughs> that's right. Well, he said that he knew what the story was about. I'd prepared him. But the first time I told him that I was going to do Peter and the Wolf, he said, and then will the wolf blow down the house, mommy? <laughs> oh. You can tell <laughs> story. You can tell nighttime stories to us anytime here. Oh, good. Yeah, well, you're getting, yes, you're Good getting job. to know them, aren't you? From rock and roll bad boys to movie idols to politicians, everybody who's anybody poses for Annie Leibovitz. Now she's taking her best shots to television, and we've got them first. Here's tonight's coming attractions. What I want to do is want to slide it right there. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Photographer to the famous Annie Leibovitz is the latest subject of biography. From Watergate to her days as tour photographer for the Rolling Stones, she's looked at life a little differently, like this Vanity Fair cover with Demi Moore. I looked up and I said, Annie, wouldn't it be great if they used this for the cover? And then we all kind of looked at each other and said, there's no way. Biography Annie Leibovitz airs tomorrow night on Cable's A&E channel. Kurt Russell in a sci-fi classic, and we have the famous missing scenes next on E.T. Your attention, please. The Super 7 jackpot has now reached six million. Hurry, that's six million dollars Friday. Don't miss it. Super 7. It boggles the imagination. A cop gave a waitress a two million dollar tip. Critics are falling in love with the most romantic comedy of the year. It's like a fairy tale. Four stars. It could happen to you. Starts Friday at a theater near you. Plastic? Who needs it? Now there's satin touch tampons from Tampax. It's better than plastic. It has a smooth, sleek applicator for really comfortable protection, and it's flushable. Satin touch tampons from Tampax. He can't walk a straight line. He slurs his words and drops things. He's not drunk. He has Huntington's, a disease that slowly deteriorates the mind and the body. There is no cure. What's worse, each of his kids has a 50-50 chance of inheriting Huntington's disease. Our only chance is you. Won't you please help my dad and me? Please call your local chapter of the Huntington Society. Thanks. Your child worries you? Could he or she be a Teflon child? Does your child seem lonely? Hyperactive? Heartless or always saying no? Conventional methods of education do not seem to work with him or her. There is a solution. And you can learn all about it by contacting the Adjustment Center for Teflon Children of Quebec. The Richards have all the extra numbers, but Mr. Richards didn't play. With Super 7 Lotto 649 and Select 42, it's better to play extra. Mm. Weekdays, it's Travel Travel Daytime, your return ticket to some of our favorite destinations. Join us all this week as Travel Travel Daytime goes Caribbean. We'll explore the natural beauty of Dominica, then it's on to Puerto Rico and the lush island of Guadalupe. Enjoy the sun-drenched landscape, history and nightlife of Cuba, and in the Dominican Republic, discover golden beaches and wonderful windsurfing. Thursday at 11.30, discover Cuba on Travel Travel Daytime on CFCF 12. Russell has had some of his finest moments with director John Carpenter. They first teamed up for Elvis in 1979 with Kurt getting an Emmy nomination for playing the king. But they really went to town when Russell played a twisted hero named Snake in Escape from New York. And after all these years, you're about to find out there is more to the story. You always were smart, Harold. Just one thing right now. Don't call me Harold. 1981's Escape from New York saw Kurt Russell forced to save the President of the United States after he crash-landed in Manhattan. The twist? It's set in 1997, and the city has become a maximum security penitentiary. Today, the film's become a cult classic, and director John Carpenter can't believe it. Yeah, kind of surprised. I think maybe it's because it has a, a grain of truth to it, about the crime rate, and about New York sort of does resemble a prison at times. 
Now Carpenter has recut the film, adding more to the movie, setting up why Russell's character, Snake Plissken, has to escape from New York. The movie started with a, inside a bank, a futuristic bank with robots moving along. There are people gathering money, and the bank is robbed by a, it looks like a maintenance man. It turns out to be Snake Plissken. And uh, he runs uh, down a corridor and uh, up through the desert and uh, into a subway station. He finally takes off his maintenance uniform and his accomplice is there. He's hot wiring the subway train that runs uh, basically from Florida all the way to San Francisco underground. And uh, very quickly, we learn that these two guys are bank robbers on a big scale. And uh, they manage to uh, commandeer the subway train and get inside. And uh, uh, they ride all the way to San Francisco, thinking, of course, that they've made it and that uh, they're going to get away with it. However, waiting for them uh, at the other end of the line is the United States police force. And they kill uh, Snake's uh, accomplice and they capture Snake. And that's uh, the reason that we find him in the prison in New York. John Carpenter borrowed the name Snake Plissken from a friend, and like Kurt in the movie, the real snake had a snake tattooed on his stomach. Hey, Snake, if you're out there, we'd love to hear from you. The director's version of Escape from New York is in video stores now. When movie makers use the martial arts, furniture shatters, glass breaks, and feet and fists fly. Want to see how they do it? E.T. went to the set of the new television movie Vanishing Sun 3, and we found out what they mean when they say action. The action drama Vanishing Sun, starring Russell Wong and Chi Moi Lao, follows the lives of two Chinese brothers skilled in the martial arts. But all this action doesn't come easily, as Russell Wong showed our ET cameras. One more. Hi, entertainment tonight. Uh, welcome to Vanishing Sun. In the scene, Russell will kick and crunch his way out of a police station. Fight choreographer Roger Wan lays it all out. He's going to try to you punch, spin him around. There's going to be a chair here with uh, rollers underneath. You're going to send them off this way. It's basically just running over from here. And in midair, pop. You're going to jump back, um, head flip off the table. Okay? It's like this. Excuse me. Okay, so it's just like this. Head flip off the table. And you're going to... You can do that. Yeah. And right before you exit the door, you're going to swing back and hit both of them that were here in the face. And that's basically the fight scene. As Russell got ready for his scene, he told us these fights remind him of his former career. Russell used to dance professionally in music videos. The balance and the coordination and holding your body and all that in martial arts, very similar. You know, body control and the coordination, very similar. Roger Wan adds some flips and other flourishes to the scene. And for these, he will act as stunt double as well. But the rest is up to Russell. It's not going to be... Ah! The camera resets, and the scene continues. Action! Stop! Stop! After some more fine-tuning, here's how you'll see the scene at home. Stop! Hey, get him! Stop him! Stop him! It all flows together quite well, and Juan says it's because of his leading man. Russell's very talented, very, very gifted athlete, and uh, it's very easy to train. And he picks up a, pretty quickly. Just to dance. Yeah. Today, Billy Joe McAllis. Who had a hit by throwing something off the Tallahatchie Bridge? The answer is coming up in today's birthdays. Papa said to Mama as he passed around the black eye. What's this? Kids with a cellular phone? Introducing Amigo from Cantel. Affordable cellular for people like you who thought they'd never use it. At last, there's cellular that fills your need for safety. For only $19.95 a month, you can have a regular phone for your car. A phone they can use to reach you and you can use to reach them. Just by calling this number, you can have Amigo Safety. It plugs into any cigarette lighter. Imagine, for just 66 cents a day, it's that easy to have the kind of safety and security you've always wanted for your family. You can have that good feeling right now. Have your credit card handy and call. We'll get your Amigo Safety to you within 48 hours. 
Or if you'd like even greater freedom, you can have it for only $29.95 a month. This is Amigo Personal, and it goes anywhere. Wherever you are, you can call friends, and they can call you. And all your weekend calls are free. Amigo Safety, Amigo Personal. You make the choice and call this number now. Ask how for just $10 more, you can get unlimited evening calling. Your Amigo phone comes right out of the box with easy-to-follow instructions. Just pick it up and call. As easy as that, you're talking safety, you're talking personal. But hurry, because if you order right now, you'll be eligible to win the use of a Jaguar XJSC. So call now, because at last, your affordable cellular is only a phone call away. Amigo. Hello, I'm Valerie Pringle. Well, you won't want to miss tomorrow because Dennis Parks is going to sing O Canada. He's come up here because he wants to make it up to us. You know, he massacred the national anthem at a football game, and he's going to sing it again. It's the unthinkable taste that's for everyone. But hey, did you know? Cheerios has only one gram of sugar and the great taste your family loves. Air travel furnished and a promotional fee paid by Delta Airlines. Delta and the Delta Connection offer over 4,900 flights a day to 34 countries. You'll love the way we fly. Was it third of June, another sleepy, dusty day? Celebrating a birthday on this Wednesday, July 27th, singer Maureen McGovern is 45. Olympic gold medalist Peggy Fleming is 46 today. The singer, whose 1967 hit revolved around the mystery of me and Billy Joe throwing something off the Tallahatchie Bridge, is Bobby Gentry, and today Bobby is 50. Also today, actor Jerry Van Dyke of Coach is 63, and television producer Norman Lear turns 72. Did you get that Bobby Gentry thing? You got of the Of course you I did? got that. You mean you didn't? I, mean, I didn't. That's the first time in 10 years you didn't get I'm that. sure. <laughs> We're going to leave you out on the Rebel Highway, a new TV series featuring remakes of those classic rock movies of the 50s. And the songs are re-recorded by some of today's hottest pop stars. Here's a great example, Los Lobos with Lights Out. Enjoy. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Let's go out. Join Robert Stack in another episode of Unsolved Mysteries tonight at 8 on CFCF 12. Let's go out. For home improvement tonight at nine. <laughs>